Hello, everybody. So, Star Wars was pretty good, I have to say. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen the movie yet, but I can tell you that although my predictions weren't completely right, they were not completely wrong either. And I'm pretty proud of that. While I've been busy geeking out over Star Wars the last couple of weeks, the first trailer for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them has been released, and I'd say it looks pretty awesome. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. But now, on to today's topic, a little discovery of mine. If you like me, hang around Pottermore, you're probably familiar with the Sacred 28. If you're not, don't worry, I'll explain to you right now. The Sacred 28 is within the Potter universe, a list composed by some unknown pure-blood maniac sometime in the 1930s or 40s, um, and it contains the names of all the old families in Britain that supposedly were still pure-bloods, and this was supposed to help preserve the purity of these bloodlines. On this list are on one hand names like Malfoy, Lestrange, Caro, you know, famous Death Eater names, who of course are proud to be on this list and proud to call themselves purebloods. On the other hand, we have names like Weasley, who have publicly announced in the past that they know that they have Muggle heritage as well as magical, and thereby they've proven the list to be false. The truth is, of course, that more or less all so-called pure-blood families actually have Muggle blood in their veins from marrying Muggles at some point in history, simply because the magical community would have died out otherwise. Anyway, back to the list. There are 28 names on it, hence the Sacred 28, and all of them are featured in the Harry Potter books in some way, either as prominently as the Weasleys or the Blacks, or just mentioned in passing, like Selwyn or Razier. All except two. Shafiq and Folly. Wait, did you say Folly? <laughs> then, in the 1950s, a man called Aubrey Folly purchased the place. Folly was soon known to be possessed of substantial private wealth, which he supplemented in mysterious ways in the city. Mm. To be honest, I don't think that there is that much thought behind this on J.K. Rowling's part, simply because I don't think she would like to draw the attention from the very real um, social criticism that is in this book and the story. But it's a fun detail to think that the Follies in the casual vacancy might actually have some magical blood in them. If you haven't read The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling, I really suggest you do so. Um, fair word of warning though, you should be over 18 years old, simply because it's really not a children's book, and you shouldn't go into it expecting anything at all like Harry Potter, because it really isn't. But it is a truly good book, and it's been a long time since I've been so angry and frustrated after finishing a book. It really provokes a lot of emotion and a lot of thought, and I think it's truly worth reading. That was all I had for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'd like to know, have you read The Casual Vacancy? And if you have, what did you think of it? Did it provoke you? Did it make you feel anything? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I will be taking a short YouTube break over the holidays, so Merry Christmas to you all. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, then just Happy Holidays. Take care of each other, and I'll see you in 2016.